it's Nadia from Leah Dia Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Today we are making a stained glass style tray, uh, a little small tray. And um, as you saw in the time lapse as we started, I went ahead and I painted the design on here. So now it's all dry. But I'll quickly walk I'll quickly walk you guys through what has happened to this point. So this way you're up to date. And um, and then we'll go forward with the next steps. So the first thing I did is I poured clear resin into this mold. This is an eight inch mold here. I poured a thin layer of clear resin. I think it was about four ounces of resin that I poured in here and I let it cure. And then it was a nice solid surface to go ahead and create the stained glass on top. So um, if you've been following me for a while, you'll recognize this technique, but I wanted to review it again because I have been getting a lot of questions on the process and how I do it and you know everything involved. So uh, like I said, so what I did from there is I had a clear piece of um, resin just cured and I had my sketch. So I'm gonna show you here what my sketch was. And this is the washi tape that we're using. Um, this is from the washi tape shop. And they have a whole series of Van Gogh inspired washi tapes. And that's what I was using here for this piece. And again, if you follow me on Instagram, or even if you've been paying attention to my shorts here on YouTube, um, you'll see that I actually have made a series of uh, Van Gogh inspired pieces. Uh, this is the largest one. I do have four other designs um, in like coaster size. So like f uh, about five inch diameter. So there are a bunch, but this is the larger one. I want to show you guys how this one was made. So as you can see, I created a sketch based upon the design of the washi tape and I sketched it out here in my book. Now, um, normally, um, as you can tell from this mold here, this mold is not a see-through mold. It's a very, it's a solid mold. And uh, so normally um, what I would do is I would take my sketch um, and then I would just take my coaster mold and I would put it right on top of the sketch. And then this would allow me to go on through and actually just kind of trace the design that I want onto the resin um, through the silicone mold. But in this case, um, and part of the reason why I just did it as a time lapse at the beginning was because I couldn't do that. So, um, so this design was actually just freehand drawn. Let's move this out of the way here. And uh, so you can see that this design was actually just uh, freehand drawn. It's similar. It's not even all on camera. Let's move it all over. Okay. Is that better? All right. So yeah, so you can see the design is pretty much similar, but I did take liberties um, where necessary to kind of make it more towards, oh, I'm getting all kinds of stuff on here now, um, more towards what I'm looking for, for the design, how to fill the space. And, you know, just um, once I, I'm actually painting, uh, drawing, sometimes I do adjust things, but it just gives me a guide of positioning and where I want things to be. So I just freehand drew that. But like I said, normally I would uh, make myself kind of a design template and just lay the mold right on top and just makes things a lot easier. So you could do the same thing if there's, if there's a design that you see, you know, online, if there's, you know, or if you have a sketch that you want or some other pattern that you've seen online and you want to see if you can create a piece with that, um, you could do something similar where you just print it out or whatever, and then um, you can use it as a guide. All right. So once I did that, I'll well, get rid of the book. So once I had finished that, then I went through and actually uh, paint, like I said, painted the design. And I used, well, this is the product that I used. It's this, the Pebio Serenity Relief uh, Outliner. This is in King Gold. Uh, this one's not used, but just so you can kind of see, this is the one I used. So I just usually roll up. So that's the, and I used probably, well, this one I is, uh, was already used, but I, for the amount that's on here, I probably only use like a quarter or a third of this, of the tube. So if you see how big the tube is, probably only about that, well, let's go this way, probably only about that much actually was used on this piece because it's just lines. It's not a lot of filling in or anything like that with the gold. So anyway, so as you can see, we now have our design and what we're going to do is paint it in. Now, again, if you've uh, been following along on any of my other um, 
you know, short form media. So like I said, if it's TikTok or Instagram or YouTube shorts, um, you'll already have seen this piece. So this is what it actually looks like when it's done. I'm making a second one here um, because this one is sold. So I wanted to show you guys how it's made. So as you can see, we have a lot going on here. There's a lot of shading with different colors. We have a lot of glitter up on the top here, some blending. Uh, obviously, it's not a typical stained glass because normally stained glass, you have indiv you know fully individual sections that are completely you know divided out because that would be the structure the way that actual stained glass works the top half of this um i didn't do that i just kind of created more of just i want it to be a night sky so i didn't really want to completely uh, separate all the sections i have done a starry night um design where i did fully kind of do the more um stained glass style so if you uh, I don't have one on, I don't think I have one right now, but if you are on Instagram, you can go through there and you'll find that older one that goes back a few months um, that is there. But this is the newer style I want to try and it mimics more closely to the actual design in the washi tape of what we did in the sky here. So, and like I said, the bottom here is more consistent with actual stained glass. Like I said, each section is kind of divided out and everything is, you know, has its own little pieces. So... But anyway, I still think this worked out really well, and I wanted to show you how I created that look here. Now, keeping in mind, each one of my pieces are 100% unique, because again, I'm making each piece by hand. So the coloring is going to be similar, but not exact, because I made the, the previous one about a week ago, and now I'm making this one, and I custom mix all my colors. So um, there will be some differences and won't be an exact replica, but I think that's the charm in having handmade things is that um, they're not always going to be exact. They're going to be similar. A lot of, you know, obviously the overall look is going to be similar. So someone would feel like they know what they're getting, but the colors may be slightly different. But anyways, we will look at that uh, near the end of the video just to see how the differences are between my previous piece and this one here. So anyway, with all that being said, um, I'll get all my uh, colors together and then we'll get started. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to show you guys really quickly all the colors that I'm, you know, somewhat using in this piece. Um, as we look at the washi tape again, you can see that there's a lot of blues and purples and there's some golds and just various shades of blues and purples, especially on this piece. So when I'm creating... Um, I know a lot of people ask me in my videos, um, you know, if I can specify the colors, if I can specify exactly what I'm using. And a lot of times uh, my response, I mean, if I can show like if it's a single color or a couple colors, I will definitely kind of say, oh, for sure, use this color. Or this is what I'm using. Um, but majority of the time, <laughs> this is what I'm doing is I have multiple shades of colors that I'm mixing and matching, as you can see here, to kind of create my own version or the color that I think I want. So sometimes, like I said, this blue here probably has, I mean, it had, probably has all of these colors in it, um, like all the blues that are here. Same thing with the purples. And I've created two different shades of purples because some of it has pink in it, some of it has blue in it. So, you know, you can see that there's three different shades of purple here and none of them match <laughs> any of the purples that I have here. And that's what I do is I basically mix the colors to what I think I want for or what's going to best match the piece that I'm working on um, or just whatever color I have in my head that I want to use. So that's how I'm mixing colors. And um, that goes back to what I was saying just before um, in the last clip was that Generally, we're not going to find um, when I'm creating pieces that I'm going to have an exact match. If I was to create two pieces, they will never be identical unless I was using, you know, a color straight out of one of these containers and not mixing it with anything else is um, it's almost never going to happen that you're in an exact mix with me. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, and that's why I encourage my customers to that if they let's say they want a set of coasters or something and then you know, six months later, they want another set of coasters of the same thing. A lot of times I'm going to tell them I can't guarantee it's going to look exactly the same because um, depending on what the color is, I probably custom mixed it. So anyway, just so you guys kind of have an idea um, how that, you know, how many colors go into. And then I and actually I'm going to mix 
probably these colors with each other as well as I'm painting. I'm probably going to be blending some of these colors to get the shades that I want. I kind of just gave myself some base shades that I know for sure are going to show up on the, on the washi tape or in the piece. And then I know that I'm going to be mixing other colors in there as well. So, and I do have a couple glitters in here as well. We have this really pretty um, holographic glitter from Let's Resin. And then this one is a Martha brand, Martha Stewart brand. So this one's from Michael's. And then this is from Paradise Glitter. This is one of their new ones as well. So, and like I said, it kind of all gets mixed in at some point. So it's really difficult for me to to be able to say, oh yeah, for sure, these are the colors. So, and you can see there's various brands. I mix and match my brands all the time. And I'm sure that's to their frustration <laughs> that I'm a lot of my pieces are mixed and matched with other brands. So it's really difficult for me to say, oh, I'm only using this one brand. It really doesn't happen that often. So anyway, I'm going to go through um, how I mix this. Let me just get, you know, put everything back and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. And now I just want to quickly show you how I mix. Now, um, again, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I love this product here. It's Dura Clear Gloss Varnish. This is what I use for pretty much everything <laughs> when I'm painting on resin, unless I'm using actual acrylic paint and I don't need to mix it with anything. But any micas or glitter or anything else that I'm using generally gets mixed with this. Um, it does, it is opaque, and this bottle's almost empty, but it is opaque, but um, once you, once it dries, it's completely clear. So it's great for the stained glass style um, that I'm creating today. So the colors you see here, they look a bit more washed out than they will be on the piece, just because when it dries, it will be a pure color. Like right now it's kind of washed out because of the varnish. But what I did want to show you is um, how I mix them. Now I do have one here that's uh, not, there's no color in it. This is just the varnish. And uh, let's, I don't know, I don't really need a color, but let's just pick one. Uh, let's mix some pink. Why not? So we have this pink from Eye Candy. And I just take about... So for stained glass, we obviously don't need it to be super opaque because we want the resin, the transparency of the resin to show through. Uh, let's see if we can show this piece again. You can see here, like you can see my hand right through this, right? Like even though you see that there's color... And when it's against a darker background, I don't have anything dark right now. Um, if it's against a darker background, um, the color shows through more. But when it's a lighter background or nothing in the behind it, it definitely has that transparent look. And that's what we're trying to go for. So the more pigmented your, res your well, in this case, your gloss varnish is that goes on the resin, the less transparent the piece is going to be. So keep that in mind. I mean, that's okay if you want it to be less transparent. Um, it's just depending on what the look that you're going for. If you want it to be, uh, you know, have that right, that really nice translucency, um, you got to make sure that you're not over pigmenting your, uh, well, your resin or your, um, or your varnish. I know some people will have been doing stained glass styles with resin. So same idea, just you can't over pigment it. So let's just say, for example, I'm using this pink and I'm going to put just a bit in here. And we're going to mix it. Now this amount here is going to be very translucent. And you can tell that just by looking at it. It's very faint. Right? And you want to mix it really, really well. You want to make sure, especially when you're using micas, you don't want any of the grit of the mica. It does take, you know, about 30 seconds or so to really get that mixed properly. But you want to make sure you do that because you don't want any clumps. Or anything like that. So that's oh, got a bit there that's dried on the side. It's this has been sitting here. I prepped this a little while ago, so now we've got little bits of varnish kind of clumping. But uh, so there. And I have this piece of acetate, just a piece of plastic that I'm going to be used just to kind of uh, show as an example. So again, we can look. At, I'm going to put this on here, and we're going to look at it again um, a little bit later once it's dried so we can get a good idea um, of how they look so and again obviously too the thinner you paint it the more trans transparent it's going to be as well here this is basically how I paint this is how much I put on when I'm painting on my pieces but if you you know wanted to make it even more 
transparent you could go very light with your very thin I mean you may end up with patches which is why I don't usually do that but if you had a small area and you were just trying to you know just get it really thin you could also do that now if I was to add more let's say an e another equal amount so that's another little brush full and this is a very small brush I'm using it's a double zero so keeping that in mind and you'll see that mine look more pigmented than this and I may add more gloss varnish to this if I find that it's it is too um, opaque but let's just mix that up okay and we're gonna put that down and you can kind of see already just by doing it like this hopefully you guys can see that on the I don't know if it shows differently on the camera, but you can see that it's much more pigmented than that. And even if we were to try to thin it out, you know, it still looks darker. You know, it still can be transparent, but it's also a darker shade of the pink. So there's that. And we'll do one more. And we'll just get that mixed in and if I want areas to be you know darker or just heavier in general then I will definitely do this um, and even especially when I'm mixing uh, for you know solid pieces so not uh, stained glass pieces but solid background pieces I would definitely be in this range of how much pigment is added to the gloss varnish I definitely would want it much more vivid so this would be closer to what I would use. Um, it's probably even not that bad, not that far off from what I'm doing here, but um, definitely when I'm painting on um, opaque resin, it's going to be more like this. So this way the color, the actual color is really shining through. So we have this. And like I said, we're going to let these dry while I'm working on the piece. And then we'll come back and see how they look. Um, once they're dry. And that was going to give us a good idea of how it's going to look on the resin itself. Okay, so we're just going to do that. And I'll bring that closer just so you guys can see it. And so you can see there the differences in the color. And that's just based upon how much of the mica that you're actually adding to the gloss varnish all right and like i said you can kind of you know you can't really see through it right now maybe here you can kind of tell that you can, there because it's wet it's reflecting but you can tell that you can definitely see through these a lot more than that so anyway i'm gonna let that dry we'll put it aside and then i'm gonna start painting okay so we're ready to start painting and i did add a little bit more gloss varnish to these um, just because they they've been sitting for about 30 minutes already and they're starting to kind of just get a little bit thicker so i just wanted to add that a little bit more gloss varnish to them so what we're going to do is uh, because i have this as my reference i'm going to be picking colors or trying to make it similar to what we have here so we're going to start with the dark the dark blues because i want to start from this side and so you'll see that, I don't know if you can tell, but in these ones we have dark purple and dark blues. And so I'm going to take my blue and just, and we're just going to put them in like the bottom corner because it kind of like fades from dark blue up to purple. So I'm going to just kind of drop it in like so. And like I said, you can go as thick or as thin as you want. You don't want to go overly thick and really flood it because uh, gloss varnish, when it's very thick or so, like it's very pooled, when it starts to dry, it will, it possibly would crack. So you don't want to go overboard and like completely fill these, you know, these areas. Um, but, and again, so if you do find that you want it more pigmented and that's why you're putting more of the paint or like the mixture into this area and you just, you're putting more cut, like you're putting more of the gloss varnish into it because you want it to be more pigmented looking, then it's better off to just add a bit more mica. So just keep that in mind. So instead of just, you know, keep adding more and more of the paint, like 
the mixed paint into your area, you're better off just adding more mica into the mix. So then you're getting a deeper color, but not having to put as much of it into the painted areas. I hope that makes sense. So, and if you want it less, then obviously you can do less. So we have the blue, and then we're gonna put this kind of a, this lighter purple. So I have three different shades of purple here. The blue one, it's kind of a medium violet, and then there's a more of a magenta tone. So we're gonna put that in here. I'm gonna actually put a little bit of this one too. And this is what I mean, like I actually go in and I do mix the colors quite a bit, depending on, you know, how it's looking, what do I want it to look like. So just and I kind of just sometimes swirl those a bit together so now as it dries it was just like resin it will settle um, doesn't always self level but pretty close and then it will kind of mix and blend a little bit together as they dry so keep that in mind as well you're not unless you make your um, your varnish very thick uh, like with lots of pigment in it lots of the mica you're not going to it, the colors are going to tend to blend. I mean, there are going to be some bits areas that look separate, like this bottom area will stay blue, but um, there will be areas that will want to blend. So just keep that in mind as well. All right, so that's a small spot, but let's do this larger area here. So this hill is this, uh, well, it's actually this here. So, so it has purples, and then it has some streaks of the lighter purples and blues. So we'll start with the dark purple on the bottom. Like so, and just kind of spread it out a bit. It kind of fills in that whole bottom area. And then I'm gonna put some of this color in there as well. And I'm gonna do all of this while it's wet. I'm not gonna try to, I'm not gonna be going back over and dry brushing over any of this, it's all happening right now while it's wet so we're gonna go in and add this i may add a little bit of this color just because it's a little bit more on the pink side on the top it's very similar actually but it's got a bit more pink in it like so and then i'm going to take some of my blue and i'm actually just going to streak it in here um, like this so it just again it's going to kind of blend but a little bit of that blue is still going to show. So it's still going to be there and it's going to give a similar effect. Um, and I got a little bit too much in there, but it's going to give a similar effect to what we have on here. Like so. Okay. I hope you guys can see that, but um, yeah. And then same thing will be happening on this side would we'll just be doing the same thing. So I'm just going to continue on here. I mean, uh, we'll do a time lapse. I'll do the bottom half and then we'll come back and discuss the top half. Okay, so basically we have the bottom half done now. I did a little bit here as well, but um, just get rid of that. So what I, uh, as you can see, the all the kind of designed areas, like the landscape is all similar. We use the similar colors, just kind of mix them up differently to include them here. Um, but you might notice that this piece here, that is the beginning of the sky, um, looks lighter. And that's because I just added more gloss varnish to this dark, blue to thin it out and then I placed it here because I do want to add some glitter and some other different types of details um, for all of the sky but I'm going to show you what I did here before we move up there so I just put like I said I thinned out the blue put it there and then I have mixed some of the gloss varnish with I don't know if you can see the glitter and I used the glitters I showed you guys earlier this Martha Stewart purple and uh, no, wait, Martha Stewart purple and a little bit of this one here. So 
Um, yeah, so again, not a lot, just kind of a little bit mixed in so you can see it's quite fluid still. You can see the gloss varnish in it. We don't want it too thick, but uh, just enough so we can add it and it will add some sparkle. So I'm just going to go in here and just start adding it in. Again, it's not going to look like much at this point because everything is very wet, but once it dries, it's going to have a nice sparkly, uh, like a subtle sparkle, nothing too crazy. The top half um, we'll have a lot more going on, but uh, we do want a little bit of that extending down here as well. So we'll go ahead and add this in. Okay, so there you go. She's just got a little bit of glitter in there. And then I'm gonna show you this old piece, this other piece again. So you can see here, that I just kind of added in some just of the other purples in here just to kind of add some, I don't know, some just kind of interest and dimension. And then I'm going to swirl a bit of the yellow pigment as well as some gold glitter around these stars just to get them to sparkle. So let's do that. And uh, so the first thing I'll do is we'll add a bit of these other colors. So let's take a bit of this lighter purple and we're just going to kind of just go in and dab. We're not going to, again, we're, it's just, it's like a night sky. It's going to have some variations in it. We're not going to be too concerned about, you know, exactness here. We're just more making it look interesting. So it's kind of mixing and blending it in to these areas like so. And everything is still very liquid. I haven't waited at all for any of this to start to dry. It's all very fresh. So like I said, it's gonna, as it dries, it will do some interesting kind of little things as it blends. It should look pretty nice. So just get this side done over here. So again, just a little bit. And then we're gonna take some of this blue and we're gonna actually kind of circle around of these stars to kind of give it and I mean these are details that you know you can if you feel you know you feel inclined to do so you can do it you don't have to I like adding a lot of detail to my pieces so the time spent here to me is worthwhile but if you wanted it to be you know simpler with not as much detail that's obviously you know something you can do as well and just Swirl that in a bit, a little bit around these, like so. All right, so there we go. I'm just going to do another little one in here. All right, and then same thing with our yellow. We're just going to quickly go in and just add a bit of yellow. And I mean, Van Gogh is known for his Starry Night, and this is, you know, Starry Night on the Rhone. So, uh, oh, sorry, over the road. So, um, you know, he has a very particular style, especially with his stars to kind of have these circular patterns around them. So we want to, you know, honor that a little bit in here as well. So we put a little bit of yellow and then we do the same thing. I'm going to add a little bit more glitter to this one. I'm going to do the same thing. Just a touch of the glitter going around it. And just it just gives that... You know, it gives us that sparkle that we're looking for, you know, in our night sky. You know, it just makes the stars look like they're twinkling. So, so we'll just go around. Like so. do a little bit around these little tiny guys too just to have them do their own thing 
There we go. And I'm actually going to also take the same uh, gold mixture here and I'm going to fill in all these little dots in the windows. So we'll do that. And I'm going to go and move on to the top half. And basically it's the same thing. The stars, just that these are larger. We're going to do the same thing. Swirl colors around it. And uh, we'll see what we have at the end. So we're all done. Everything has been painted and now we're just gonna let it dry. So I, I don't know if you can tell or maybe through the time lapse maybe you can see it but um, so this area is starting to darken because it's starting to dry and this area still looks quite you know kind of washed out but as everything starts to dry um, like I said in the gloss varnish you know turns transparent we're gonna see a lot of those colors that we've um, kind of blended together here. So so I'm going to leave it now and it's probably going to take, I'm going to give it probably about four or five hours to fully dry. Um, it's late now, so it may be overnight, but I will just let it fully, fully dry because that's important when we're using uh, gloss varnish, especially this particular one, because it is a water-based. So um, we need it to be 100% super, super dry before we can add our top coats of resin. So that'll be the next step after this. Okay, so it has been... I want to say about five or six hours now and everything is dry um i did add okay so one thing i wanted to mention was so once it's dry if you want to add more details in terms of like glitter um or anything else i would only advise on adding glitter at this stage you could do the same thing we did before we just mix up a bit a little bit of the gloss varnish and we can just kind of spot add it in where needed um, it's going to be difficult to add in um, any more pigment and resin at this point once it's dry because it'll look patchy. Like because it's a see-through piece, because it's a stained glass piece, it is going to look patchy. Now I did have a little bit of an issue here um, where I did end up having a little, I don't know, something fell on it and I needed to remove it. But the paint was the mica and the gloss varnish had already dried. So I had to kind of scrape it out a bit and then tried to patch it and it didn't look great <laughs> so i decided to add a little bit of glitter on here and i think that's going to even it out we'll see i don't know um how it turns out but and, and i do like the glitter on here i think it adds a little bit of you know a little extra magic to it so in any case um it is dry so i'm going to give it a little bit more time because i just added the, the little bits of glitter here i think they're pretty much dry too but i'll probably give it another hour or so just to make sure it's fully dry so once it's dried um what i'll be doing is adding two coats of resin to it it will be um, one layer of resin while it's still in the mold and then i'm going to take it out of the mold and then do the second top coat or dome coat i know a lot of people don't like calling it a dome coat because i'm going to be um, actually letting the resin um kind of go flood over the sides um so i guess it could technically be called a flood coat or a top coat <laughs> i like calling it a dome coat because it just gives the resin you know a domed edge like along the edges it just rounds off the edges so to me it looks like it's domed so um yeah so i know there's some people who are very particular about the um the terminology but in any case it's going to be two top coats um and then uh, and then they'll be done. So when I do, when I take it out of the mold to do the second top coat, I will be putting liquid latex on the bottom. I will link in the description um, a tutorial on how I do that, if for those of you who wanna know that procedure. And then, um, yeah, so once we get the two top coats on it, it'll be done and we'll take a look at it after that. Okay, so we're all done. And we can have, you can see our final piece here. 
and you can see the edges so I did add the two top coats and you can kind of see how the edges are kind of rounded and that's from the second top coat or the dome coat that's the reason why I call it a dome coat just because it gives that nice rounded edge but you can see how pretty and sparkly everything now looks under the resin uh, it's a little bit hard to see the translucency I think it's because the background matte is so dark let me put my look here so there we go so here you can see a lot better how it's see-through you can see my hand right through it and yeah so there we go so it does give us that stained glass kind of look there all right let's get turn that one back over there yeah so there we go so that's how and you, with the darker background you kind of see the colors a bit better so let's we can take a look at that but yeah, I really like how this turned out and how the colors match so nicely with the washi tape in the center. And this would be, I mean, I call it a tray, but this could definitely just be a display piece. I do have little stands that I sell with them. So this way, you know, if somebody wanted it and they wanted to actually, you know, display it up on a stand. Um, it's really nice to do that as well because it helps you see the stained glass look of it when it's got light bouncing off of it and through it. So that's the one, if you guys want to just see the comparison to the other one. Uh, let's grab that. Oh, and before we grab the other one, I wanted to show you guys this. Remember this little sheet that we had made? Um, so you can see here the difference in the now it's all fully dried. And you can see how they look with the... Um, you know the different uh, amounts of mica powders that were added and that even with that let's see if I put my my finger here you can still see through them it's just the, how much you're able to see through it so so there you can just so this way you know that you can you know mix the mica according to you know the pigmentation that you want you know how translucent do you want your piece and like I said there is a previous video that I did I did link it it's gonna be linked in the description of um, the different options for colorants so yeah in that video I talk about like pigment dyes and mica powders and I think there was another thing I can't remember what it is now but there was a few things that I talked about so um, we could definitely you know, like I said, if you want to check that out, just to see some of the options. Um, oh, and glass paints. I think that was the other thing. So there's a few things that I was I covered in that video. And uh, so if you want to check that out, it'll be linked in the description. So we have that. So we have our little paper. And I wanted to show you guys the, um, the first one so we can compare them. So here we go, side by side. There we go. So, I mean, you can see the differences here. So in this one, um, let's see if it shows up on camera. I'm not really sure, but um, this one, we have a little bit more of a lighter blue, kind of a glowy effect around some of the stars. Obviously, you know, you can see if you really carefully, you can see the differences in even just, you know, how the paint strokes, uh, the lines are in the pieces. And there's obviously a little bit of differences between you know the design in the bottom here so like I said it's it's gonna be unique like even like this little edge here this little piece that's flared out here we don't have it on this one so like I said I take artistic liberties <laughs> with um, each individual piece so that's why each piece is gonna be unique and you know they really are one of a kind even if they are from the same series um, every piece is gonna be you know definitely unique to um, to in terms of colors and the actual hand painted designs and, and styles in them and even in how the I mix the mica powders there's gonna be differences as well as even the swirls like this one has a few more of the blue swirls this one has a little bit less so yeah so it just it gives a really nice um, uniqueness to each piece by um, having it like this. So I hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you did, let me know in the comments what you think of the technique, of the style, of how this piece turned out. If you saw my other pieces on Instagram or in uh, YouTube shorts or on TikTok, <laughs> um, let me know what you thought of the whole series, you know, which one's your favorite. 
And for those of you who may be interested in buying, I do, I will be adding these to my website actually uh, the same day that this video is launching. So if you, if you want to check it out and see what I have left, um, like I said, there is one of these trays is going to be on the website for sale. And I do have a few of the um, coasters and they're all being sold individually. So take a look and uh, see if there's anything that you like there. But either way, I thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching till the end and I will see you next time. Thanks so much. Don't forget to share, like, and comment. Talk to you soon. Bye.